I definitely remember, uh, you know, just getting a call from Mike Woodson. And at first, real talk, at first it was just, you know, to come up and work with the guys during training camp, and, you know, to try to push them coming more from a, from a, a, I guess, a coach's aspect side of it. Uh, I definitely wanted to play. And it was a chance to play for the Knicks. You know, when I was in high school, I was a Knicks fan because I grew up watching Patrick Ewing with me being in Philly. Let's go. Hey. Salute to the general number 33. Of course. <laughs> no of course. I grew up watching PE in the Big East. And so he's always been, you know, my my number one guy. Because I looked at him like, okay, he's tall like me. He's a hell of an athlete. And I always saw him on TV. You know, he's a black guy. I always saw him on TV every weekend playing basketball. So I was a big PE fan and you know, just that team and that grit that that they had, you know what I'm saying? With with Charles Oakley out there, and then you had you had D Harper out there on Dan that Harper. wing. The hand you know, check it, it was some grit. Aunt, yeah. Aunt Mason. You know, yeah, it was yeah, it was sir. grit and grime out there. True and story. I, I loved it. And when Mike hit me with that, I was like, yo, word. I'm I said, all right, no doubt. Yeah. I'm I'm there with it. I don't I don't mind doing this. You know, this is kind of sort of like a dream come true to play for one of the teams that I grew up watching that that makes a lot of sense because now i think about it your, your, your game kind of patterns a lot after hewing with the little turnaround post-up moves and everything that makes a lot of sense <laughs> actually now i really really think about it um how hard was it for you to come back from retirement into like getting into the flow of the game um it wasn't too hard it wasn't too hard because the the determination was there and mm -hmm. that's 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 more than half of it you know you have to be determined you have to want it and I definitely wanted it. It's just the fact that once I did come back and get into that flow, man, that's when I broke my foot and yeah. shit was downhill since. You want to play, Rasheed? You want to play some? Let's go. When you got to MSG, man, I was at this game. Knicks versus Heat opening night. The garden is mm -hmm. chanting your name. It's the first game of the season. Like, what do you remember about that MSG moment for you, man? Oh, just sitting there, uh, the atmosphere, bro. And for the first time being on that side of the benches right. in, in MSG, you know what I mean? But it was just the, the atmosphere. It was so thick. And it's just like like everybody was ready. It was, a, it was an eruption that we were all waiting for. And... And I'm just sitting there, you know, throughout the game. Hey, the vet, look, young fella, do this, do that. Watch how I'm doing this. Watch how he doing that, blah, blah, blah. You know, just, just trying to be the old head out the crew. And then um, we were up, and, you know, I'm sitting on the bench, and that's when Woody looked down the bench. He's like, he came down and was like, hey, you want to go in? And, and you know, I'm – I'm gonna be a vet and professional. I'm not gonna stand my man up, even though we already had the game one. Yeah, I'm not gonna stand my man up. Like, nah, I'm good. I'm no, I'm not. I'm not a prima donna superstar like that or nothing. So I'm like, yeah, for sure, no doubt. <laughs> Threw off the sweats and everything. <laughs> and you know what I mean? Back it was, to it. Yeah, the legend man. was on. Get yeah, the back to it. On. Yeah, the garden man. loves that too, man. The garden loves the 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 vet that comes in and just he can get the minutes, but he makes the most out. Yeah, the garden loves mm -hmm. that stuff. The garden no loves that. Yeah. Okay. So you know what? Um, you gotta tell us something, she, because you had an impact on this team. Melo to this day still does the three to the dome to this <laughs> day. So tell me where the three to the dome come from. Like, what's the origin story? <laughs> um, I mean, it came from practice. Uh, it came from practice one day, and you know, we were going back and forth at it, and guys is just talking shit and hey i'm better than you and, and i mean it wasn't like personal you know just that team camaraderie yeah and just you know just like basic junk talking so when i'm in practice i knew it wasn't a lot of plays for me which was fine i didn't have a problem with you know i knew i was lifted out there on the wing but if you swing that joint my way i'm gonna put that bitch up. <laughs> 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 and and you know it was a couple times hit a couple threes and it was just three to the dome and the funny thing about it, like in schoolyard ball, we all know what this means. You know what I'm saying? As far as like, all right, when you hold up to three, you hit a shot, you hold up to three, and you know, or you just hit a big three. That's schoolyard, yeah. that's trash talk. So yeah. that's the same thing that I did. Now, when I was in Boston uh, in 2010, every time I made a three, I would hold a three up and 
you know, kind of, kind of sort of do the Kirk, <laughs> the Kirk, Kirk Gibson, Gibson thing. And, uh, <laughs> and it in, you know what I mean? So when I was up there, I was like, you know, just got to try to do something that's that's funny and, and that everybody likes. So I came up with three to the dome. Then the few minutes that I did get in some of the games and I made a shot, NBA hit me like, yo, you got to stop doing that. I'm oh, like, what? Man. They're like, because they, they thought it was, one, a gang sign, yeah, and yeah. two, Come they on. thought that I was trying to represent, I'm going to shoot you in your head. And I said, nah, I said, what it is, I said, it's no different from dunking on somebody. Right. When you don't want to do, boom, what you do, ah, you all <laughs> in this grill, right? I said, well, with the three, it ain't really an emphatic shot or, or a physical shot. So it's just the, you know, and I make it like, yeah, hey, Three to the dome. I just hit you with a three pointer upside the head. So three to the dome. And then after that, they after I explained it to them, they was like, all right, they stopped messing with me with it. They thought it was some type of gang signs and all this up stuff. I'm like, nah, I ain't I ain't live, living like that. <laughs> we are talking to She Wallace, throw that yeah, ball, man. don't lie in in the chat. Also a host, Jay Ellis, of his own podcast, the Lex to Get Technical Podcast, featuring yes, Bonzi Wells, Rasheed Wallace, and my guy, Gerald Brown. So make sure you guys check them out and subscribe on Definitely. all the major podcast platforms. Um, she, you know, sure. you, you only spent 25 games with this team. Unfortunately, you had hurt your foot. But this team, this was a different team. You know, we have been so used yeah. to Knicks losing. Mm-hmm. And, and this team would end up going on to win 54 <laughs> games. Um, what did you feel like, you know, when you told Woodson you were going to come back, what did you feel like you were going to bring to the team that kind of helped them, you know, get off to that good start and, and had a good season? Um, just basically that that big man leadership of, mm. of being down there in them trenches and, and, you know, working with the young guys, had a chance to work with Stat, excuse me, and um, and just, just working with, with – him and Tyson down there on those blocks and just sharing my knowledge pretty much of of the things that I've been through, just trying to help them become better in, in certain game situations. Cause we knew that they were gonna get all of the minutes. I wasn't tripping on that. I shit, actually was kind of happy with it. So, mm. you know, I wasn't tripping on it too much with them getting all of the minutes. So just look, hey, well, this is what I learned when you're guarding so and so. Yeah, he liked to do the little shimmy. He, he want to shoot it off the glass or he want to go left for the layup, go right, he going to pull up, whatever. And it was just sharing that knowledge. And that was that was a pretty good team. And as we were yeah. rolling, in my opinion, as we were rolling, I kind of sort of felt like like the 90s Knicks, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That, that was playing them <laughs> bulls and, and playing against playing against them pacers, you know, right. just that toughness because we had a veteran Ball yeah, club, yo. Yes, sir. Yeah. Oh my yes, God, sir. the big men were crazy um, on our team. Mm. Kurt, shout out <laughs> my guy, Kurt Thomas, man. Yeah, we're looking Kurt, for Kurt, man. Kenyon, we're trying to get Kurt on the show. Kenyon, Kenyon, Kenyon. Jason Kidd, Kenyon come Martin. On. Come oh, on. Oh, come on. man, that was a trip. You know what, she man, I felt like you you could have really been the equalizer on that on that Pacers series, man, because big we facts. needed somebody mm-hmm. to to really. Roy Hibbert was just going crazy. And we needed somebody <laughs> to bring him outside yeah, a little get him bit. Out of the paint. You know, Tyson was a little bit banged up. He, he had a rough series, but For sure. we, we needed somebody to, to be that Hibbert equalizer, man. But we, we glad you got to, to don the Knicks uniform at least once. Mm-hmm. But, um, oh, back, no doubt. Me too. Yeah. And, and, and but in 04, before you got to Detroit, you know, there was some heavy rumors that Isaiah was, was after you. Your agent, Bill Strickland, was in the papers basically saying that, uh, you know, he that New York was your preference to be traded um, from Portland. H- how true were those rumors back then? Um, yeah, no, it was true. Because as, as I said, you know, growing up at the time, that's when um, – uh, the Knicks had, had made the chip. You had you had Spree, um, MC for the first time, mm-hmm. LJ. Oh you yeah, you know what I'm saying. You you had a it was a it was a good squad, a good nucleus, and I felt as though that I could have been a good fit. Oh, man, for the for the ruggedness <laughs> yeah. of that team. You know what I'm saying, playing up there in the garden in in New York at the time. But of course, you know that that was where I wanted to go, and it always doesn't work out like that. So yeah. Yeah. The road that I travel, you know, hey, I ain't bitching about it. Yeah, it, it, it was a <laughs> golden road indeed, man. Yeah, because no man. Doubt. once no you doubt. got to Detroit, and you know, I was telling when when you got to Detroit, and you know, all the hype was around the Lakers and the Super Team and Carmelo and Gary Payton. Yo, 